James Harden reportedly wants out of Brooklyn, but there are some things that those reports aren't telling you. What's up, everybody? My name is Tucker. Thank you for clicking on the video. I really appreciate it. So we got some reports and rumors yesterday about James Harden being unhappy as a Brooklyn Net, which is a significant development because of all the stuff that we talked about yesterday involving Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. And this is an entirely new video. All this is new stuff from that video yesterday because this is much more Brooklyn and James Harden centric. The report basically said that he didn't enjoy living in Brooklyn compared to his days in Houston, whether that be due to the temperature or just living uh, in the city. Uh, he was upset about Kyrie being a part-time player. He disagreed with some of Nash's coaching decisions in, in terms of in-game rotations. And he's going to fully explore his free agency options this offseason, even if that ultimately leads him back to Brooklyn. With Philly being the most obvious choice here, going along with the rumors and reports we got yesterday about them being willing to wait until the offseason to deal Ben Simmons, I Ideally, in exchange for James Harden, there's some connections to the Philly organization there, all that stuff we talked about yesterday. But here's my point. James Harden leaving Brooklyn would be a massive mistake, and not just for the reasons you're thinking of. Initially, you're probably thinking that he would lose money by going to Philadelphia. Potentially, you're right. You might think that it might not be as good of a fit, or it might be a worse team in Philadelphia. You were also right about that. But here's the bigger point. Why would anyone else want James Harden? I know that's a strange statement to make after he had a 30-point triple-double last night against the Lakers. He's the only reason they're even remotely in the basketball game. Yes, he made mistakes. Yes, he had turnovers, but he's out there with Bruce Brown and Nick Claxton and Patty Mills and Cam Thomas and Kessler Edwards and Dayron Sharp. Like, it's barely a, a competent NBA team out there with him, and he's trying his best. So it's probably a weird time to make this point. But here are the facts about James Harden. This summer, he's going to be 33 years old. He's going to have played over 35,000 minutes. He's going to have played one of the most physical play styles the league has to offer, where he's always bumping into guys. He's always on the floor. He's always getting fouled. He's always at the free throw line. You can say what you want about him flopping or not flopping, but this guy takes a ton of punishment every single night. He also has had the highest usage rate over the last five seasons, certainly in his time in Houston, everything has been dependent on him. And he's not exactly a guy that has done a fantastic job of taking care of his body. And he's played in a ton of basketball games. So specific to Philadelphia, they would be giving up Simmons and potentially other stuff in exchange for 33 year old Harden with all the caveats that I just mentioned on a contract worth nearly $50 million a year. So the cost for Philadelphia is even more expensive than it would be for any other team because they would have to give up Simmons and potentially other stuff and sign Harden to that contract. But that issue that these reports are not mentioning is not specific to Philadelphia. Any team that would be signing Harden outright would be taking a massive massive risk that he would continue to be worth that contract for the next couple of seasons that he is going to be able to continue to produce at an all nba level he's been good but not great this season he's been very inconsistent for brooklyn granted the circumstances have not been ideal but the fact of the matter is he's getting old so the question is well why would Brooklyn or Philadelphia or any of these other teams sign hard in this contract. It's very obvious that there are reasons not to pay him $50 million a year. It's because of all the same reasons that Steph and Jimmy Butler and Dame are going to be making 50 plus in their late, late 30s. This is just what everybody does. There's a larger video on this to come at some point down the road about max contracts and about these crazy numbers being given out to older players. But when you look at some of the highest paid players in the league over the next couple of seasons, a lot of them are guys that are going to be going into their late 30s. And the reason you do that is because they're still fantastic players. Make no mistake about it. James Harden is still incredible right now, as evidenced by his performance last night and he's gonna be worth it in the first, second, maybe third year of his new contract. But if you're looking at a four or five year max, at some point, they're not gonna be worth it anymore. But that's just the way that max contracts work in the NBA right now. Teams are willing to eat the last couple of years of that contract to keep Jimmy Butler, to keep Steph, to keep James Harden, because somebody's gonna pay them that. The number of basketball players that have the ability of guys like Butler, Steph, Harden is so, so limited that if they're still even remotely close to that level of player in their mid thirties, they're going to continue to get that kind of a massive contract. So then the other question is, well, why is it not a mistake for Brooklyn to bring back James Harden? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, when they made the Harden trade, they knew this was coming. They knew he was going to be a free agent at the same time that Kyrie and Kevin Durant was. They knew the risks involved there, but they've already been so heavily invested in the future of James Harden with all the assets they gave up 
that they knew at the time they made the trade, this was going to be something they were going to have to pay for. They knew that they could pay for a year, two, three years of James Harden on this new massive contract. Same thing with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. And the last couple of years of those contracts might not be pretty, but for the first couple, they're going to compete. They're already too far in to make some judgment now on James Harden's ability and how much he's worth on a new contract. And also in the scenario in which Harden's ability and performance does decline. Brooklyn is in a very unique scenario when it comes to their ability to fend off that decline and work around that in terms of the talent of their roster. They don't have to have James Harden do everything on any given night. They can let Kyrie dominate one night. They can let KD dominate one night. Harden doesn't have to be Houston James Harden for this Brooklyn team. So for a year from now or two years from now, he's not capable of that for all but 10 games a year. That's fine with them. And the question is, can Philadelphia say the same thing? They can't. If they went out and got James Harden, let's say it's Simmons and Maxi in exchange for Harden. Th there's no scenario there where they're not relying on Harden to be Houston James Harden as he gets to be 33, 34, 35 years old, getting paid 50 plus million dollars a year. Everything in terms of perimeter creation comes down to what James Harden can do for them. And it's a much worse situation for him. It just unbiasedly, I understand that I'm a Nets fan, but unbiasedly in terms of prolonging his career, continue to be productive, continue to be in a role that makes sense for him, Brooklyn is just a better situation. That doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to stay, but still. And then when you add into that, the cost of Harden's contract, the cost of trading for him, if it is Simmons and Maxi, and not knowing about the health of Joel Embiid moving forward, that still always had to be a question mark in the back of your mind. We could be looking at a situation where two years from now, Philly has James Harden, who's aging, not producing at nearly the same level. Joel Embiid, who's in and out of the lineup as he gets to 30 years old. And they went from Embiid and Simmons and Jimmy Butler all those years ago and this exciting young group to two aging, really, really highly paid players and not even being remotely close to competing for a title. And what's really concerning, what th this kind of feels like to me, if that is the move that Philadelphia ultimately makes in the offseason, is it feels weirdly like the Russell Westbrook move for the Lakers. Granted, Philadelphia has more assets and they have more ways that they can maneuver if they were to make this deal and they got hard in the offseason exchange for Simmons and Maxi, they would still have some options. They'd have future picks. They'd have some young guys on the roster, but it would feel like they'd pushed all their chips into the middle of the table on the Harden acquisition. They move Simmons, which is their biggest trade piece. They're hoping Embiid is healthy. And if it doesn't work in terms of them competing for a title, that's their last real move on the chessboard. And so ultimately, I would believe that there is some truth to these Harden rumors. I'm sure part of him is like, man, it would be really nice if Kyrie Irving was on the basketball court for every one of these games, so I don't have to carry everything. I didn't sign up to be the, the one guy in Brooklyn that's healthy and is playing all these games. I wanted to, I came here to play with Kyrie and to play with Kevin Durant and dominate and have fun with these two guys. And this is just not what I signed up for. And I don't really like what Steve Nash is doing at the end of these games. I don't really like living in Brooklyn. All those things could absolutely be true. But the bottom line is the Nets are, even with the craziness of this season, Kyrie playing in less than half the games, KD being hurt the last couple of weeks, uh, Joe Harris barely playing the entire season. They're still one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference from a record standpoint. They still have an incredible championship ceiling. And if that's what Harden wants, Brooklyn is still the best place for him. Ultimately, he absolutely could leave this offseason and go to Philadelphia. And if you're the Nets and you get Simmons and Maxie in exchange for Harden, that might end up being the best thing for you in the long term. So if you're the Nets, there's really no bad path here. If Harden leaves, cool. If Harden stays, that's fine too. Either way, assuming everybody's healthy, you're going to be in a pretty good spot. And what I would encourage each of you guys to do is to really evaluate this situation and think about, you know, watch James Harden on a night where he's not going off like he was last night against the Lakers and think about what he's going to look like a year from now, two years from now, the history of his career, minutes, games, the ability of him to take care of his body and think about paying him 50 plus million dollars for the next four years and think about if he's the only guy on the perimeter and he has to create create everything for Philadelphia if that's really the best idea for them moving forward. And maybe he still has a couple of years of all NBA level basketball left. Maybe he's going to be like Chris Paul, be in his late 30s, still be well worth that massive contract. But amongst that group, when you compare him to someone like Steph, it's much more likely 
that he falls on that level of someone like Jimmy Butler that I'm pretty sure we all expect to fall off as he gets to his mid to late 30s and not be nearly worth the contract that he's on. And who knows, maybe these reports aren't true and, and his relationship with Steve Nash is great and these are coming from a completely unvalidated source. Nobody really has any idea, but it is interesting to think about and evaluate what this could mean for the Nets, for Philadelphia, for a different team. If he ends up somewhere else in free agency this offseason, it's just another part of the craziness that is the NBA.